Class X Arts has been such a privilege to reach many underprivileged um, populations. And it reminds me of why and how I became a storyteller. And so I'd like to share that story with you. I never planned to be a storyteller. I didn't even know such a thing existed. I was an actress. I was an actress at the very prestigious repertory Khan Theater of Jerusalem. But then in 1984, a disaster occurred. I was not given a part in the next play. And I do not know if you could imagine a bigger catastrophe for the tender ego of a 24-year-old. I was finished. I was depressed. I was humiliated. I was a failure. But to make ends meet, I had to get another job. And I got this job at a deprived neighborhood in the south of Tel Aviv in the after-school program, doing story hour. <laughs> I didn't call myself a storyteller. I didn't know what it was. But I was hired because unlike my predecessor, who sat with a book, I acted out my stories. I twirled in between the characters. And I invited the kids to act out the story afterwards. Now, those kids did not have the attention span to sit and listen to somebody reading from a book, so I was hired. This was my second day of the job. It was a beautiful spring day. I was doing story hour. Kids were sitting on the floor. I was getting ready to begin. When the door opened, three counselors walked in with six kids. One of them was a very burly eight or nine year old with long hair, walked in the middle of the room, kicked a few of the kids who were sitting on the floor, climbed on a chair from the chair to the table, from the table to the windowsill, sat on the windowsill and said, okay, I can start. <laughs> I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. <laughs> I said, um, I looked at the counselors and one of them said, eh, this is Lila. I said, hey, Lilach, hey, would you like to come in? Oh, I'll tell you what to do. I'll say you can start. <laughs> I'm not from this neighborhood. It was clear you do not mess with Lilach. <laughs> so I began. The story I prepared that day was a Hans Christian Andersen story called The Tinderbox. I don't know if anybody here is familiar with that story. There's a princess in the story. She doesn't have a big part. In fact, she doesn't do a thing. She sleeps through the entire story. In her sleep, the hero, the soldier, kisses her, and then they get married. <laughs> One of those stories. <laughs> so I told the story, and when I came to the part where I said, and they all lived happily ever after, Lilach jumped from the windowsill, stood right in my face, and said, I'm the princess. <laughs> all right. And you make sure he's going to be the soldier. All right. So the, her friend was the soldier, and I chose two other kids who also wanted to be the soldier. And I was choosing the kids and dividing the scenes and arranging the room. And I saw from the corner of my eye that Lila had taken two chairs, and she put them together to form a bed. And then she sat, or rather glided into it. And she folded her hands in her lap and tilted her head just so. And she closed her eyes. She was the princess, ready for the story to begin. And so we acted out the story and all the scenes, and throughout it, she just sat there quietly, majestically. She opened her eyes only once when it was time for the soldier to kiss the princess. No real kissing, huh? <laughs> no, 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 it's just make-believe. She was happy, she smiled and closed her eyes again. And then when it was time to marry the soldier, she rose majestically and put out her hand. He was giggling and blushing hysterically, but she just walked forward, as we all said, and they lived happily ever after. And so it was done, and the kids ran out, and I gathered all my scars and the things that I used to give them for, for costumes, and I was walking to my car, and the counselors were waiting for me there. And they had tears down their face, and they said, we had to tell you something. Um, we're, 
the kids that we brought in late, they are from the special ed club. They are the kids that nobody ever lets participate because they ruin everything that we bring to the center. Nobody ever lets them participate, but because you're new, and we decided we're not going to tell you, and then when they start breaking the chairs, we'll just take them out. <laughs> but we've never seen them listen for so long. And we've never seen Lila like this. We were reminded today that she's just an eight-year-old little girl. And wouldn't it be wonderful to tell you that that was the moment that my life changed and I became a storyteller. <laughs> But you know life doesn't happen that way. Usually when you're inside the story, you don't even know that it's a story yet. What I did know that day is that for the first time in weeks, I went home and I wasn't as depressed and I felt I just witnessed something. I had no name for it. But I knew it was powerful, more powerful than anything I've ever witnessed. And I wanted more of that. I wanted to learn more about and today I can tell you that it was that day, it was that eight-year-old gangster girl from the south of Tel Aviv <coughs> that put me on the path to become a storyteller. And it is with a great privilege that I have today to work with Class Acts Arts and especially with Project Youth Outreach where we work with many, many of these kind of kids. And um, I'm very grateful for that. And thank you again for coming.